Hi, Lee Ellis here with your Leading with Honor coaching for this month. You know, the word resilience is becoming more and more well-known and more popular in some ways in our culture today because we're seeing signs that people aren't as resilient as maybe we think they should be. And so I thought it'd be good to speak to that today. And recently we've just done a resilience checklist and that'll be out there on the internet. And I'll mention that a little bit later. But as I thought about this, the first thing that came to my mind was most recently, my wife, Mary, we were in an automobile accident and she was fairly seriously injured. And her resilience has really amazed me and uh, encouraged me really to think about resilience and to watch her as she's in her recovery, wearing a neck brace and been in a lot of pain. And it's really something to be admired the way she's done that. But of course, I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, she has had four children and put up with me for 42 years. So it takes a lot of resilience for that. But I got introduced to resilience at a very early age, uh, just turned 24 when I was captured as a POW and was there five and a half years. Today I'm wearing my Sante Raider Nam Pao Vietnam POW organization uh, golf shirt today in honor of that. We just we moved to Sante in July and we moved from Sante in July after being there two years and that was the camp that was eventually raided by the Sante Raiders, the special forces group that came in to try to save us out of there. We had already moved away. But resilience in those years was so important. And so when you think about resilience and application to you and me and today's society as citizens, I think there are three insights that come to mind right away. First of all, realizing that life is a battle. You know, we were not expecting to be in a car wreck and then someone turned in front of us. It was so shocking that this happened. Uh, just driving down the road, minding our own business, doing the right thing, and it happened. That's life. Things happen to us. And being resilient helps us get through those kinds of things. But we also have to know that we have to believe in ourselves. We have to believe that we are resilient. And you're in the POW camp. We learned that our bodies and our mind and our emotions are all so much more resilient than we would ever have thought. That was one of our biggest surprises. And I think for our families and the medical people when we came home, they were very surprised at how resilient we had been. But I think part of that was also that we had others. We had our leadership that was providing examples of what resilience really looked like. And that we had people around us who were encouraging us and supporting us and helping us pull through that tough situation. You know, I was there five and a half years, but some of my cellmates were there seven, seven and a half and one even eight years. So they had been there quite a while when I got there and their resilience was a real encouragement to me. So as we think about this resilience checklist that we're offering you this month, there I thought I'd just pull three of the 12 items on there that way you can prepare for to be more resilient. And the first one is, is to know your values and let your values drive you. You know, one of the values of fighter pilots and a lot of people, and especially the POWs was, was competitiveness. We're a very competitive group, and that really helped our resilience. I asked Smitty Harris one time, Smitty, when you were out at the Briar Patch camp, how are you guys doing it? You've been tortured every day, people screaming and carrying on. You barely had enough food to live. You had very, very all sorts of health conditions. How did you do it? And he said, Lee, part of it was we're just very competitive. If the other guy could make it through the day, we're going to make it through today and tomorrow. And if they were tortured two days, we're going to try to make it three. So competitiveness as a value was very important. But also having a positive attitude is a value for me and for the, most of us. We believe in ourselves. We believe that we can get through this. So those values are so important. Know what you believe and what's important to you. Viktor Frankl survived the Holocaust. If you read his book, a lot of that was about his values and his beliefs about the future and his hope for the future that helped him survive. The second thing we can do is fall back on our previous experiences. I made it through that time. I can probably make it through this one. Now, I mentioned Mary having four children. Well, that's some pretty hard times of going through that childbirth, but then raising kids too. A lot of experience there to fall back on of dealing with hardships, dealing with difficult times that a mother has, a father might have in certain situations, but especially POWs had. 
Life is that way. We can fall back on the, what we learned and getting through something. Yeah, I got through that. Now I just got to get through this. And to be honest, that helps me a lot of times when I'm facing challenges. And then role models. Maybe some of the younger generation haven't had that many experiences, but there are role models. And for me, I always have had role models that I could look to and say, you know, here's how they did it. Maybe that will work for me. Or if they made it through, I probably can make it through today too, or tomorrow, or next week, or year. When I got there and some of the POWs had already been there two, two and a half years, they were role models even though I didn't see them face to face. I knew they were there and I knew they had been there and survived. And I thought, well, they've made it. I can probably make it too. So not only do we have role models, but we are role models for others. And, you know, no question there are times people look to me and they say, well, Lee Ellis made it through hard times in that POW camp. I probably could make through this day and what I'm facing today. It's not as bad as being in the POW camp. And I actually use that model myself sometime. You know, I'm not in a POW camp. But it's not that bad. I can make it through this. So drawing on your own experiences, drawing on the role models from others, you can become more resilient. You can prepare now to become more resilient. And you can also help others prepare to be more resilient. I think that's one of the roles of leaders is to be those role models, but also to help people prepare. The military prepared us very well for resiliency. Our basic training that we went through and various trainings that we experienced, the SEER school, survival, escape, resistance, evasion, uh, those kind of uh, schools really prepared us well for the situations that we face in the POW camps. You as a leader can be preparing your people for the tough times they're gonna face. So I wanna direct you to our website, leadingwithhonor.com. We do have this uh, infographic is there and also a PDF handout uh, covering those 12 checklist items of how do you prepare for resilience. I hope you'll check it out and share it with others. Help them out too. They may be about to go through one of those battles that we talked about earlier. Well, that's it for this month. Good luck, God bless, and be courageous.